I'd like to thank you all for inviting me to speak today on the UK's position in what we call a benchmark, the global battery arms race. Uh, I've got some slides I'm gonna show which will tell the story of the UK's position um, and what the rest of the world is doing in building out what we call lithium ion economies. That's not just battery capacity, but the ecosystem to go with it to gain dominance in electric vehicles and also energy storage as that new industry emerges. So the slides I'll present now uh, should last about eight or so minutes, and it should give you a really good overview of, of where we stand. And this is our latest data of benchmark. So the global battery arms race is a phrase we created back in 2015, uh, when there were actually three of these battery mega factories in the pipeline back then. Now there are, of course, well, actually in May, May 2018, there were 84. Um, then we went to 142 individual gigafactories. And now there's 211 in the pipeline with a total capacity of uh, 3.7 terawatt hours or 3,700 gigawatt hours. So the story here is the world is building lithium ion battery capacity at speed, at scale, at varying levels of quality, but in every region around the world. China is leading this, but as I'll show you in a second, uh, this is not just a China phenomenon like it was four years ago, it is a global phenomenon now because of uh, the need for dominance, primarily in electric vehicles. So this is the, the build out region by region. This is what's in the pipeline. Uh, this is um, committed projects at various stages of either interactive or under construction. Um, and as you can see by 2030, we're at 3.7 terawatt hours. Now, if you look at, um, interestingly, that's about 70 million EVs uh, on average, depending on pack size, but you can also see there that China has 69% of this capacity, uh, North America 10%, but a lot is happening there now, um, certainly under the Biden administration, more mega factories to come. And then Europe has been very active. This is mainland Europe being very active in building these gigafactories around the world, as of course the, the, the major automotive companies get to grips with their strategy on electrification. Now, how do we view the supply chain? I think this is most critical because it's not just about building lithium ion batteries. It's about building the ecosystem, the supply chain, something that the UK has been very good at in its existing automotive industry um, and something that other countries like China, for example, have done to gain dominance in this space. So quite simply, this is how the supply chain looks from the mine to the battery cell. It's important that a lithium ion battery is a jelly roll of minerals, metals, and chemicals. So it's very much not just about having the battery capacity, but the raw materials and the chemicals to feed uh, that capacity. But this is, the, this is how the industry looks. This is the supply chain from a high level. Now, the first challenge is building capacity at every link in the chain. Now, it depends what strategy companies and countries want to go down, whether they want to get involved in all of it or just some of it. Um, but capacity in every link in the supply chain is challenge number one. Then challenge number two is quality. So this lithium ion batteries are not commodities, they're speciality products. The chemicals that go into it are not commodities, they're speciality chemicals. So there's a certain element of chemical engineering that is, is driving this forward. And so capacity and quality at every link in the chain is challenge numbers one and two. China's leadership strategy since day one has been to control the midstream of this battery supply chain. Now there might be a, a, a view, a thought that China has a lot of domestic uh, natural resources and therefore it has a lot of these battery raw materials. Only 23% of this basket of key battery raw materials was mined in China. That the key ones for us are lithium, nickel, cobalt, manganese, graphite. They're the speciality um, chemicals that are mined and then made into a chemical that then goes into the cathodes and anodes. They're the five key inputs, the five biggest challenges for countries and for companies. But China only mined 23% um, of these basket of raw materials, but it refined 80%. So really important. Um, that the, this midstream owning capacity in the midstream, as you can see, 66% of cathodes and anodes there 
gains downstream dominance, as you can see with the battery sales and the electric vehicle market share percentage. So very much a midstream uh, supply chain strategy from the top within China over the last 10 years. What does the UK need to do? Well, we've said this a number of times, but the UK does need to build in our mind at least four gigafactories by 2027. Uh, this is the equivalent of 175 gigawatt hours, depending on you know, how many, you know, what the capacity of each plant is, but the goal is domestic lithium ion battery capacity of 175 gigawatt hours, which needs to be ramped and ready by 2035. So you so have it ramped and ready, you need to be starting to build these or have some of them active by 2027 to have them ramped and ready by 2035. And the cost has to be under $110 a kilowatt hour. Doesn't need to be the lowest cost in the world, it needs to be competitive, it needs to be quality. Now, what does that mean for the supply chain in terms of just sheer tonnages? So as you can see here, this is uh, what I've mapped out by 175 gigawatt hours. Uh, that's 140,000 tons of lithium chemicals. That's about half of what was produced globally last year. That's no mean feat. That will be a mix of domestic sources that have to be established, have to be built, have to um, develop the know-how to mine and extract and make these lithium chemicals domestically. But there will also need to be contracts with countries that produce, that mine and produce lithium uh, in the correct format for the UK's needs. So that's number one. Um, cathodes, 315,000 tons, anode to 10,000 tons. It's a lot of tonnages. Um, the industry is ramping. The point here is how much of it is located domestically, how much is going to be uh, deals from countries that are based abroad. There has to be a balance. Um, the third thing here is battery cells. It starts with the battery cells, as I mentioned before. And, and then you start to build an ecosystem. That also includes battery recycling, but that will have to be established alongside the, life, the lifespan of these uh, gigafactories. So that doesn't come first. That'll probably come second or third in the life cycle of building just a basic supply chain um, for the UK. The key is every stage in the battery supply chain has tiers of quality. So that's something to look out for. The UK needs tier one lithium ion battery makers together with new startups to increase competition. Uh, we judge the tiers of lithium ion battery makers every quarter. And this is uh, our tier one producers. That's, they have to have scale, they have to have quality and they have to be qualified uh, in Western OEMs, not just uh, Chinese electric vehicle makers. So the UK needs to attract tier one tier two and new startups, new you know, UK champions for this. So finally, the three main points here, UK complacency, complacency is no longer an option. The UK has been discussing this on many levels in many government departments. It has not brought together a coherent strategy from the top, which is what's needed. It needs to come from number 10 uh, and then it needs to organize all the departments to then bring in industry and push forward a supply chain, an ecosystem agenda, not just an individual um, individual battery agenda, for example. So complacency is no longer an option. This is a global mega trend. It starts with the raw materials. Lithium ion batteries are here to stay, they're getting better. So there's no risk of a shift in technology that will uh, make lithium ion batteries redundant. It's scale that we're talking about now, they're proven. The rest of the world is doing it. The third thing is the rest of the world is building lithium ion economies. You can see this now in the US with President Biden um, announcing really the need for more gigafactories. We think they're going to need at least another 10, maybe another 20 in the US. The EU committed $3 billion and more to come to the supply chain. The EU understands that you need a ecosystem here. And uh, China understood this 10 years ago and continues. And so the world is building a lithium ion economy. What does the UK want to do? Well, if it wants to be part of this electric vehicle revolution, part of this energy storage revolution, then it needs to begin with a plan now. 
Uh, we are happy to help, of course, at Benchmark. We are speaking to many different departments, but it has to come from the top. It has to come from number 10. Uh, and on that, I appreciate uh, your time for listening and for being invited um, to give this talk. Thank you.